Hi, welcome back. Welcome back to Escape Forever Free. I'm your girl Faith and we are teaming again this morning to restore physical, mental, spiritual and social wholeness as we step out in faith to restore these faculties. I welcome you to Preparation Day. It is preparation for the Holy Sabbath Day actually is the center um, of our topic in chapter 25 and even chapter 24 that we just finished to a large extent. So the Sabbath day is a hollow set aside day set aside by God and it cannot be changed even though men shall think to change times and things including what is coming ahead in the form of the Sunday law legal institutionalization um, of making the Sunday law um, mandatory, making Sunday worship rather mandatory on a legal matter, um, trying to usurp the authority of God. No, while the scripture does teach us to obey the laws of the land given to Caesar what is due, it is conditional that these laws and ways of Caesar do not usurp the laws and the will and the commandments of the God and creator and sustainer of this entire universe, God himself. So in that context is where we give our obedience to the laws of the land. So we're going to delve deeper into the matter of the Sunday law. Thank you again for coming. Let us pray and press forward with the 1888 edition of the Great Controversy and our King James Bible. Father, we thank you for another opportunity again. Here we are on Sabbath Preparation Day. We thank you as we go into more study of these facts that you'll give us understanding, clarity, and you give us the, the greatest um, strength of, that a man can possess, which is the character of surrendering his will or the, the act of surrendering his will to you. Father, give us that strength, Father, and make us weak where we're strong, if that's what it takes for us to surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're going to go into our memory text. We've been practicing it for the week and now we want to recite it. It comes to us from Psalm 84 and verse 2. And it says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Again, Psalm 84 verse 2. My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. We hope we did get this correct. Let's read it. It says, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. Psalm 84 verse 2. We pray God keep this in our memory to be able to use it as his Holy Spirit guide us to um, edify souls and to glorify his name. Let us go to our page chapter, sorry, our chapter 26, page 451.2. It reads, these words apply in the Christian age, as is shown by the context in Isaiah 56 and verse 8. So if you'll turn your Bibles to Isaiah 56, we'll read verse 8 together. So it reads, the Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him, besides those that are gathered unto him. Again, the Lord God of the Lord God which gathereth the outcast of Israel saith, Yet will I gather others to him, beside those that are gathered unto him. All right. Here is foreshadowed back to the controversy. Here is foreshadowed the gathering in of the Gentiles by the gospel. And upon those who then honor the Sabbath, a blessing is pronounced. No, thus the obligation of the fourth commandment extends past the crucifixion, resurrection, the crucifixion, resurrection, and ascension of Christ to the time when his servants should preach to all nations the message of glad tidings. The Lord commands by the same prophet in Isaiah 8 verse 16. Turn your Bibles with me to Isaiah 8. Let's read verse 16. It reads, Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. Back to the controversy. 
So the seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment, right? This only of all ten brings to view both the name and the title of the lawgiver. Let's say that again. The seal of God's law is found in the fourth commandment, right? This only of all ten brings to view both the name and the title of the lawgiver. It declares him to be the creator of the heavens and the earth and thus shows his claim to reverence and worship above all others. Aside from this precept, there is nothing in the Decalogue to show by whose authority the law is given. Now when the Sabbath was changed by the papal power, the seal was taken from the law. The disciples of Jesus are called upon to restore it by exalting the Sabbath of the four commandments to its rightful position as the creator's memorial and the sign of his authority. Let's read. In Isaiah 58, it says, well, let's read 58 verse 20. I'd like you to read that. Um, it says, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. All right? That states very clearly. So while conflicting doctrines and theories abound, the law of God is the one unerring rule by which all opinions, doctrines, and theories are to be tested. And that is the message of this text that we just read. Again, says the prophet, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. We stop there for today as we consider these truths in our Sabbath hours. Let us go to our meditation on him and do stanza two of the holy Sabbath day of rest number 381. Seek not pleasures of this earth with its folly, noise, and mirth. There are better things in store over on the other shore. Yes, the holy Sabbath rest by a God divinely blessed. It to us a sign shall be throughout all eternity. Let us pray. Holy and righteous Father, Lord of the Sabbath, creator of heaven and earth, and ruler and authority over this whole universe, we bow before your holy presence, giving you thanks for truth and light which you have been revealing to us through these studies to help us to understand your command for the Sabbath to be kept holy, which is the fourth command of your ten. Father, we pray that wherever it is that traditions or confusions or for whatever reason we have been practicing otherwise, we pray that your Holy Spirit will convict our hearts and humble us before the great and mighty and loving and terrible God to understand that his requirements are not negotiable and help us, Father, to do what is right and righteous in your sight. We thank you for the Sabbath day ahead and we pray for a special blessing in it and we beg also for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit to enable us to keep it holy. These and other mercies we beg of you in Jesus' holy and righteous name. Amen. Let the words of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be now and always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. My dear friends, Happy Sabbath, when it begins on Friday at sunset, wherever in the world you are. And may God help us to honor it all the way until Saturday at sunset, wherever in the world you are at that time. As you know, we have just changed times back here in this side of the world. And we hope that we'll not be confused with the sunset hours. So pay attention, the signs are in the sky itself. And also let us pay attention so that we'll enter into the Sabbath on time. God bless you and do continue now for one hour, you and God alone always sticking 
to the blueprints, the holy scriptures, which is our gifted roadmap from God himself to lead us into his holy courts. See you next week. God bless you.